Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to another layout update from the Modular Model Railway. And as you can see from the title, today's video is going to be all about installing point motors to the layout. This is actually something you guys have been asking me to make a video on for a while, and truth be told, I was always intending to add point motors to the layout. I've just been stalling a little bit because I wasn't entirely sure what type of point motor I was planning to use. Uh, originally, I was gonna try using the seat point motors, the uh, solenoid point motors, very common, used on lots of layouts, uh, and I believe they just use magnets to switch backwards and forwards, and then you wire them up to a switch and a power source, and away you go. Um, in the end though, it was actually the wiring that sort of turned me off using the seat motors. Uh, let me explain. So from my very, very, very basic understanding, a solenoid motor has to have three wires going to it. Two from the switch, one so you can switch it each way, and then a common return down the middle. I think that's right, but don't quote me on this because I haven't actually used these motors. This is just everything I've read up on the internet. And this is also assuming as well that I'm using insole frog points, not electro frog points, so I'm not switching the polarity of the point or anything like that. That is a whole nother rabbit hole that I'm not gonna go down today. Um, but basically that means you have three wires going to each point. Okay, that's not a huge amount of wiring, is it? But then if you have seven or eight points on your layout like I do, uh, or potentially even more, uh, then that number quite quickly stacks up, doesn't it? It's not an insurmountable number of wires, especially if you have a permanent layout set up where you can just do the wiring once and hopefully it all works and you never have to touch it again. Unfortunately, I don't have a permanent layout. Mine is portable, which means that at the end of every session, I have to take it all apart, dismantle it and put it away. And then at the beginning of every running session, I have to put it all back together again in the correct way to make sure that it runs. And I could just see that with lots of different wires all running to different things and making sure that the right switch was linked up to the right motor. Uh, yeah, I could just see a lot of points of failure. And so that was why I kind of shied away from the seep point motors in the end. And then I discovered a company called Megapoints Controllers. And they they make electronic circuit boards for controlling servo motors. And if you don't know what a servo motor is, well, basically it's one of these. So a very simple little motor that has a little arm on it here that moves backwards and forwards, and that can be used for controlling points, signals, gates, anything else that you might want to move on your layout, really. Uh, and so on the surface of it, this motor is incredibly simple, but the real brains of the operation is the Megapoints controllers. And so let me show you those now. So here we have the main components of what makes up the Megapoint system, or at least in the way that I'm using it. On the left is the multi-panel and on the right is the servo controller. I'll get into what these do individually in a second, but essentially these both work together to control the servo motors. So as you saw before, this is a standard servo motor. They're pretty small and not too expensive either, and the fine control you get with them means they're great for moving things like points or even signals on model railway layouts. So going back to the control board, this is the servo controller, and essentially this drives the motor. You can plug up to 12 motors into this board alone and set start and end positions for each of them. It also has some special programs built into it too, for example simulating a bounce on semaphore signals which we might look at in a future video. Now you could control the servo motors directly from this board, but I've actually opted to control my points using the mimic panel. And this almost acts as the brains of the system. It's basically a control panel, and when I flip a switch that's connected to this, it'll send a signal down to the servo controller, which will move the relevant servo. It also has the ability to show me how I've set the points to by using LEDs. So at any given moment, I can just quickly glance at the control panel and see if the line is set correctly. So that is a very basic idea of how the Megapoints controllers work. To be honest, I'm not going to go into too much detail about them here because the guy who actually designs and creates these boards has his own YouTube channel where he shows all the different features that they have and goes into all the different endless possibilities of things you can do with these boards. So yeah, if you are interested in finding out more about Megapoints, definitely check out their YouTube channel up here. There's a link at the top right of your screen now. Click that and you can check out some of their videos after you've watched this one, of course. For me though, right now, I'm gonna to attempt to actually install some of these boards and the point motors to my layout. And this is quite exciting for me. I've never had a layout that has had point motors before, so uh, I'm excited to get to work. Let's get to it. So the first thing to do is to actually add motors to all the points on the layout. Now, when I built the two station modules, you may remember that before I stuck down the points, I marked out where the tie bars were. I then drilled a 5mm hole through the baseboard and that was directly underneath where the point mechanism sits. And so here is the same point on the layout and today it's finally time to fit a motor to it. 
The first thing to do was to centre the point blades so that they're not pushed over to one side. To do this I simply folded up two scraps of paper and then wedged them into either side of the blades just to hold them in the middle. I then flipped the whole module over so that I could actually attach the servo motor underneath. Here you can see the hole I drilled through the baseboard months ago and now if we look directly through it you can see that this lines up nicely with the hole in the points tie bar. I'm using piano wire to act as a rod from the servo motor to the point itself so I've just cut a small section off so that it's a more reasonable length. And then using some pliers I'm going to create two right angled bends at one end of the wire. These bends allow me to thread the wire through the holes on the servo arm and it's a nice fit so I know it's not going to fall out easily. Next it's time to attach the servo to the baseboard and to do this I need some sort of bracket. To do this I went down the route of using 15mm aluminium angle which from what I've seen seems to be a pretty common way of doing it. Believe it or not the gap in the middle is a perfect fit for servo motors so it's tight enough to hold it in place but it can still be easily pulled out if you ever need to replace or adjust it. First I drilled two holes that were roughly the length of the servo apart and that's so I can eventually screw the bracket in place. I then drilled a third much smaller hole which is what the piano wire will go through up to the point itself. Then I just needed to cut this small section off using the Dremel. Usually I only ever have to cut through rails so this was quite a step up. Obviously it's not a great job, my cuts are far from straight but it'll do and it's now time to fit this to the underside of the baseboard. So here is the servo and first I'll push that piano wire through the smaller hole and then push the rest of the servo into the aluminium angle. Now it's time to get it in position on the baseboard, threading the piano wire through the hole in the board and then also through the hole in the tie bar as well. Now you can see that the wire is sticking up or rather down at the moment through the point. With everything in the right place I'll now fix the bracket into position. Using my mini pin drill I just make a very small pilot hole, then I put the screw in place and tighten it up. And then I did the same on the other end. Now the wire that comes off the servo motor isn't very long so I plugged in an extension cable which I can now run all the way back to the servo controller. And now with the module the right way up again I can remove the paper from the points and it's now time to program the motor. On the servo controller I press the program button once which now means I can set the positions of servo 1 using the high and low buttons. As I hold down the high button here you can see the wire and the point start to move until it clicks into position. Then using the low button I'll do the same and you can now see it moves in the opposite direction over to the other side. And that is now the movement of the servo set. I'll just plug in a toggle switch that I've quickly wired up and then we can give it a test. there you go, we now have a motorised point on the layout. That's working pretty well I think, so not too bad for my first one. And now I've just got to repeat this same process on all the other points on the layout, so I'll see you in a bit. So finally I have all of the point motors in place and I'm going to be honest that took a lot longer than I was expecting it to. Um, yeah, it was a pretty repetitive task but it just seemed to take most of the day but thankfully they are now all installed underneath the baseboard and they're hooked up to each point. I just need to be able to control them, which quite neatly brings me back to talking about the Mimic panel, which I showed you earlier. At the beginning of the video, I said that the Mimic panel is a bit like the brains of the system, in that you connect all your switches to that, and then when you flip one of them, it sends a signal through to the servo controller so that the servo knows what to do. 
Really though, that's only scratching the very surface of what the Mimic panel is. In fact, the main reason for having it is to connect LEDs to it. In fact, this is one of the sets of LEDs here that is intended to be used with it. And uh, this is paired with one of the switches. So one of these LEDs will be lit at any one moment. And so the idea is that when you flip the switch, the LED that is on will go off and the other one will come on instead. Now, what is the point of this, I hear you ask? Well, this is fantastic if you have a control panel that has a diagram of your layout on it. And that means that you can have these LEDs installed where the track is and so that you can see which way the points are set. I don't really know why I'm showing you these little LEDs, to be honest, because to be perfectly honest, I've got several of them hooked up here and powered on, so we might as well just have a look at this instead. This is my very temporary control panel. Uh, yeah, this is certainly not the final thing, it's just a bit of spare wood that I've drawn the layout of the station on in Sharpie. And then you can see that I've got the little switches embedded into this and also the LEDs. And now if I flip one of these switches, you can see that the lights flash a bit, and then when they stop flashing, the other route is now selected. And that syncs up with how the points will be set on the layout. And so if I flip that switch, the points will move at the same time. Except at the moment they're not. That's because these aren't connected at the moment. Uh, this sort of control panel here is completely separate from the layout itself. The only thing they're sharing at the moment is a power source. So uh, yeah, let's get this turned over very quickly and then I'll show you the very simple thing I need to do in order to connect this to the layout. So as I turn this over, you can see that underneath there is quite a mass of wires. And this is all stuff that I would have had to have running between the layout and the control panel if I wasn't doing this with the Megapoint system. All of this though is hooked up to the multi-panel board I showed you earlier on, and now to connect this to the layout, all I need to do is plug in one set of wires. The other end of this is plugged into the servo controller, and so in theory when I flick a switch, it'll send a signal down that cable to the servo controller, which will tell a servo to move in the appropriate direction. With my very temporary control panel back in position and now hooked up to some power, we can test this out. So I'll flip the switch to the points leading into the shed and the point moves on the layout. And the route the LEDs indicate are the same as how the points are set. So it's really easy just to look down at this panel and see the position of every single point on the layout. But as fun as it is to see points move back and forth, I think it's time to try this out in a more practical setting. I've got the J15 on the layout and I think we'll do a little bit of testing, so first I'll set the point so that it can leave the siding. Now that it's back there I can set all the points here to run it into platform 2 and then let's get it going again. It's a really nice run of this J15. It's, it's one of my favorite engines actually, so hopefully you'll see a bit more of it on the channel in the future. There we go, and now I'll try reversing it into these sidings at the front of the layout. Fantastic. Okay, so to finish up, let's move it out of here and I'll take the J15 into platform one now. So I'll set this point and also the double slip to allow me onto the main line. and then stopping the loco and changing the points again so I can run through to platform one. 
so I think we can consider that a success. This is just the beginning though, as I'm really only scratching the surface of what the Mega Point system can do. So hopefully once I've had a bit more time to play with it, I'll be able to show you what my plans for the future are. Anyway, that's going to be it for this time guys. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date with my progress on the layout. For now though, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!